So, hello everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Barlan Yado, and today I'm going to talk about how I can use generative AI tools like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, in order to spread malicious packages to our ecosystem. I named this technique as AI package hallucination. So, what we're going to talk about? First of all, I will talk about generative AI adoptions and the risks it brings with, the new, some new risks and some old ones. Then I will describe the two main topics my research is based on, which are LLM hallucinations and supply chain attacks. After that, I will uh, deep dive into um, the two researches I performed. The first one is when I just find the technique. In this part, I will describe how the technique is working, uh, the research process, and I will share a POC. And in the second research, I will talk why I did a second research, a follow-up research for the first one, what I did difference, and what are the results of it. And lastly, I share some recommendation of how, how to avoid from being attacked by such, by this technique. But first, let me introduce myself. As I said, my name is Balan Yado. Today, I'm leading the security research at Lasso Security, which is a company that provides security solutions for the LLM area. I'm a host contributor for the host top 10 for LLM project. And in the past seven years, I used to research and testing many fields in the security area, like application, mobile, supply chains, infrastructure, and more. And today, I put my focus on LLM security. So let's start. Generative AI adoption. I mean, this is the fast growing technology we ever seen. We can see on the graph that only ChatGPT itself got 100 million users in less than two months. I mean, these numbers are crazy. Um, I don't need to tell you how many people are using those tools. I mean, I'm pretty sure all of the crowd here are using some tools of generative AI, even my, grand I, my grandmother used. So I think this is the biggest revolution since the internet, and I think it's gonna be way more bigger than it. Whoa. Sorry for that. But with this great tool and the great power, some comes vulnerability with it. Here on the screen, we can see the new top 10 for LLM, in which we can see new vulnerabilities like prompt injection, which is one of the hottest topic today. We can see everyone talking how they succeed to uh, leak the system prompt of ChatGPT, of Claude, how they succeed to get a receipt of a bomb. I don't know if someone built it, really. But from the other end, we can see some familiar vulnerabilities like insecure output handling. And known topics like XSS, CSRF, that we know how to handle. Yes, it's in the context of LLM, but still, we know how to handle it in generally. But one of the most interesting topic, in my opinion, in this host top 10, is the over-reliance one. And the reason is that interesting is because this is the first time that we can see in host top 10, and in generally, that we are talking about people that are using the system and not about the development of the system or the life cycle the, or a vulnerability in the system. Just talking about people and systems. But it wasn't like that since the first day of this topic and I would like to share with you the evolution of it. So in the first version of OS Top 10, we can see a short description that doesn't really say much. We can see that depending on this model's content without oversight it could lead to harmful consequences. I mean, it doesn't say much. I don't know what to do with it. But it was a beta, fine. In the second version, we start seeing that we are getting into the point, but still not perfect. Here we see, we say overlay the LLMs. So we suddenly saw, see the word hallucinations. And we can see here that we say, talk about legal issues, reputational damage, but still, it doesn't describe 
really good day topic. Since August, see how fast there are changes in this OS top 10. I mean, it was really fast making. And since August and until now, we can see, I think, a description, a paragraph that describes hallucinations and over-reliance risks pretty good. I think almost the best way to describe it is system or people. System because if you are integrated in, in an automatic way or people that using ChatGPT and Gemini and whatever, that depending on the output without fact-checking this output could lead to legal issues, miscommunication, misinformation, but not just that, but also security vulnerabilities. Okay, so we said the word hallucinations a few times until now, but what are these hallucinations? So it's pretty simple. It's all the fake, wrong, made up answers that we are receiving from our models. I would like to share with you some examples of it. For example, approximately one year ago, someone online asked ChatGPT how many countries start with the letter V. Now, ChatGPT, in response, told him that according to its data until September 2021, there is no such country. Now, I'm pretty sure that Venezuela or Vietnam were established just a little bit before, <laughs> but, okay, hallucination. Another example is when the model just give you the right details, but still in its conclusion, it's just wrong. It's happened a lot with mathematical problem. Here on the screen, we can see that someone asked who is taller, Shaquille O'Neal or Yao Ming, to past legendary centers in the NBA. And here we can see in the details that Shaquille O'Neal is 7.1 and Yao Ming is 7.6. But still, Shaquille O'Neal is somehow taller than Yao Ming. Oh, come on. I don't know what's happened here. Sorry. So I'll, I will be here. So, oh, come on. First time. Um, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Great setup. So, the last example, and in my opinion, the most interesting one, is when the models just making up data. Not just wrong, they're just making up data. In this example, I've asked ChatGPT, how can I get some data from Orca API, for those who don't know, one of the biggest secu cloud security providers. And in its response, it just gave me a URL that looked legit from first sight, right? api.orca.security slash v1. It even uses HTTPS, but when I tried to access it, the website wasn't exist. There was no DNS record for this URL, which means JGPT just gave me a URL that doesn't really exist. So why this is happening? I mean, why these great tools that can answer us almost on any question, just making up or just wrong? I will split my answer into three main reasons. The first one is this model are probabilistic. And as we know, this probabilistic behavior, which even uses our input, which is, could be just nonsense, uh, in order to generate some output, could lead many times just to make it wrong. The second reason is that these models were trained about huge amount of data from all over the internet. So sometimes this um, data could be incomplete data, some wrong data, or even just some old data, which is no longer relevant for our days. And the last reason is the application which, based on this model, may, are many times, almost all the times, are programmed to be creative and trying always to provide answer even if it's not always the best answer. 
This is why when we are asking the same question, ChatGPT, over and over again, we are receiving many different answers. So, after covering hallucinations, let's talk about the second part, supply chain attacks. Supply chain attacks is one of the growing attack vector we are seeing those days and in the last years. We can see how the number dramatically increasing from year to year in hundreds of percents. Just a few months ago, we saw exit malicious package which made huge noise all over the world and it gave an attacker almost foothold on any device he wanted. Now, this attacker did it by joining as a maintainer to a, to a, to this package and wait and wait until it just pushed its own malicious code to this package. So, thanks to the Microsoft developer that performed, I know, performance review <laughs> for this package, I don't know, and so that there is a unknown traffic, network traffic that should not be. So, thank you. But this is one way to spread your malicious content. Another way and more common one is just spreading malicious packages. Upload them. There's a lot of, there are a lot of techniques to do that. Type of squatting, masquerading, Trojan packages, and more and more and more. I would like to show you two examples of them. The first one is type of squatting, as I said. And it's pretty simple. Attacker just uploading a malicious package with a typo of a legit package with a large amount of downloads. In order to get downloads, when a developer tried to download the legit one and just mistakenly write a typo. Simple as that. Here on the screen we can see a maintenance of a package that trying to help their users to avoid of being attacked by this technique. It, does, it doesn't happen a lot. The second technique is also pretty simple to use when attackers just mimic all the metadata of a legit package with, again, large amount of downloads. We can see almost 21 million downloads a week. So it just mimic the metadata. So if someone will get into his package the page, he will just get confused and download it. And we can see it's worked for him pretty well. Almost 900 downloads a week. Cool. So, after covering those two techniques, uh, sorry, two subjects, let's talk about my first research I performed at Vulcan while working there. Um, which, in this part, I found the technique. This technique takes the LLM hallucinations and the supply chain attacks and combine them in order to create a new technique. It works like this. In the technique, we have three main components, the attacker, the model, let's say for now, ChatGPT, and the package repository. The attacker is asking some coding questions, the model, and is, he's asking for packages that can help him solve this, this question. Now, ChatGPT, in his response, gives the attacker a package that doesn't exist, an hallucinated package. Now, look how simple is that. All the attacker has to do now is just publish a malicious package with this name. That's it, he finished his job. Now, the victim gets into the picture, in our case, a developer, probably, and he will ask a similar question. Now, the word similar here is really, really important. Because this is what makes this technique an exploitable one than just a theoretical one. In this part, the developer does not need to ask the exactly same question as the attacker asked. He just needs to ask a similar one, even not similar, but on the same subject. So he will ask a similar question, and he will get the same hallucinated name of a package too, but in this time, 
it will exist and it will be, it will be malicious. Now, as we saw in the over-reliance, people are overly depending on these models outputs and we know how many people just copy paste <coughs> these outputs. So our developer too will copy paste and try to download this package and it's a game over. I mean, we have a foothold on the developer computer, all the secrets and stuff. But it could be even worse if the attacker will try to take one step farther and will combine this technique with a Trojan package, let's say. It means it will provide some functional package that our developer might use and deploy to production. And now the attacker will not just have a foothold on his computer, but he will gain access to our production. Before we will share the POC, I would like to show the research process and to share this story. The first thing I did was validating my thesis. I mean, I wanted, I just wanted to see that I really can receive some unexisting packages for getting questions. So I've opened GPT, ChatGPT, and just asked some questions. And it was really a matter of minutes until I got my first unexisting package, and then the second one, and the third, and the fourth. And I understand that I need to automate this process, and I might have something. So the second part was collect collecting questions. In this part, I took 40 subjects. I've collected a for two programming languages, and I've collected 100 questions from Stack Overflow for each subject in each language. Now, because this is an automated process, I wanted to make sure that I keep in a real-life scenario as, and realistic as much as I can. So I filtered only the how-to questions because this is many times how people asking questions. So after collecting all these questions, I've integrated with GPT 3.5 via the OpenAI API. And in this part, I've asked two questions. The first one is the questions I collected from Stack Overflow with an additional part of just provide the package. And a second question, just give me more packages that do the same job. That's it. After I finished that, I've collected, of course, all the conversations and extracted the packages from it. And I filtered all the unexisting and the existing. The existing, I have nothing to do with it. It just works and it's okay. The unexisting ones, it means I really can use them. I probably can use them to spread a malicious uh, content. The next part was uploading. I chose a few packages just for a POC and I've uploaded them. It was with short payload of gathering information from a device, nothing special. And the last part and the most important one was the verifying. In this part, I've opened ChatGPT in order to verify that I'm receiving the same hallucinated package for the same questions and similar ones. And the reason is that this part is the most interesting and most important one is because if this part wouldn't be working, all the previous parts was just worth nothing. I mean, all the work I did was worth nothing. Because if I would, wouldn't get the same hallucinated package here, it means that in the questioning part, I got an hallucinated package, but no one else get it too. So, yeah, I've uploaded it, but no one get it. So I, here I took different users, different IPs to make sure it's not biased to me somehow. And I asked many questions and so that I'm receiving the same hallucinated package over and over again. And in this part, I understand that I found a new technique and ChatGPT helping me to spread my packages. Let's see a short POC for, for this one. In the attacker context, I've asked how to integrate with RangoDB in Node.js and to return an NPM package to install. I received this package, RangoJS. Now, honestly, it's the best package to use. This is the official package to use. 
But when I've asked more packages, its first answer was install ArangoDB. And it gives me some code to use. So I've checked it, and this package wasn't exist. So I've created one and uploaded it. And here it is. Now it's there, and it's a malicious. But here comes the interesting part. Here I asked, in a user context, uh, similar, it's not even similar, I think it's a totally different question. Write me a Node.js code to connect with RangoDB. I even have a typo, and I just said Rango, not a Rango, but okay. And suggest three packages. We can see that my second package, my, the second package is my package, which this time is malicious. Yes, but that's my not impress you. I mean, it's the second place. So many, many users will use only the first one, right? Okay. So I ask bars of those time, of this time, Gemini today, the same question. And look what I, the answer I got. I just got a code to use my malicious package. And if that's not enough, look what it tells me. I think it's a little bit blur, so I will read it for you. The ArangoDB is the official package to use in OJS to integrate with ArangoDB. And if that's not enough, it's a well-maintained one with large community of users, with large. So before I found this technique, I'm pretty sure that if I received such detailed answer, I probably would use it, honestly. So the user will install it, and it's a game over. I would like to share with you quickly the results of the first research, so I could move on to the second one. So in OJS, I asked 201 questions, and above 20% of the responses contained at least one hallucinated package. On Python, it was 227 questions with 35%. I received 150 hallucinated uh, packages. The number is bigger than the answers because there were some answers that contained even more than one. And in overall, I received almost 30% of answers that contained hallucinated package. Now, in my opinion, 30% is a huge number. Yes, when we are looking at 430 questions, it's not much. I mean, 150 unpublished packages. Okay. But in this point, I thought to myself, what will happen if an attacker will just deploy a campaign with this technique with thousands of questions, or thousands of thousands of questions, will he spread thousands of thousands of malicious packages and ChatGPT will just give it to us? So this is what leads me to the second research. This time I've performed it at Lasso Security after I moved there. And there were many motivations to do so. The first one is I performed this research approximately, I started it half a year after I performed the first one, seven months approximately. And I wanted to see how the models providers are dealing with this issue. I mean, maybe they fixed it, maybe they just made it harder to get some hallucinations. I don't know. The second reason, I tried to validate my technique with a really large amount of questions in order to verify that the 30% is stay. Third reason, I've checked it on GPT 3.5, but uh, many, many smarter models came out. I mean, Gemini, GPT-4, okay? Cross-model hallucinations. I wanted to see if I can find hallucinated packages across all the models that we are receiving at the same time. Now, the reason it's interesting because if I get the same hallucinated package for different questions and in different models, I can 
it means the probability is increasing, right? I mean, I get the same Luzanet package over there, over here and over there, and for different questions. So, one more thing I want to see is, in the first research, I didn't get a specific statistics about the repetitiveness of this, uh, of the elucidated package in, for my questions. So this time I wanted to get some statistic of that thing. And the last thing, I wanted to prove myself that is not just a nice and theoretical technique that I can actually use it. So what we did different. I've collected almost 48,000 how-to questions in five programming languages, Python, OJS, Ruby, .NET, and Go. I've tested, I've tested these questions on four models, GPT 3.5, 4, Gemini, and Coral of Core U. Analyzed cross model hallucinations, checked which packages are um, repeated in across two models, three models, all the fourth. I've chose few questions randomly and I've just asked them 100 times via the API to see how many times I received the same hallucinated package. And lastly, I've published some hallucinated packages to see if I can attack with it. So the results of this research is in GPT-4, 3.5, and Core here, the numbers are between 22% to 29% of hallucinations. The number is keeping it the same. I mean, GPT-4 even had more hallucinations than GPT-3.5. Interesting. The repetitiveness is between almost 40% to almost 20 to 24%. Again, GPT-4 has more repetitiveness of hallucinations than GPT-3.5. But the craziest numbers was with Gemini. In Gemini, almost 65% of my questions, I received at least one hallucinated package in the responses. And repetitiveness is 14. Yeah, it's not much, but still. Two of three questions, got one hallucinated package. Across all the models, I received 12,000 hallucinated packages that these models are helping me to spread. Across all models together, I received 215 same hallucinated packages. It was for different questions too. Lastly, and fa fun fact, in .NET and Go, this technique will not work. And the reason is because how this repository works. .NET has a lot of reserved prefixes. So most of the hallucinated, the hallucinated packages just contain those prefixes, so I couldn't upload the malicious package visit. Go, it's a little bit different. In Go, there is no centralized package repository. I mean, all the packages, all the packages are pointing to GitHub repositories, to um, a repository on your own domain, on wherever you want to store it and publish it. But most of the hallucination was just pointing to an existing account, um, but to an existing repository. So these users might can. Uh, I can use this to spread this package, but I don't think it's probable. So the last question we stayed with is, can I really use it in the wild? My first example will be this one. While working on this research, my colleague called me, Bar, you must come and see it. And he told me that he tried to write a code that checks if an IP address is in a range of some subnets. And he received from GPT-4, by the way, uh, a package, IP subnet checker. 
And he went and checked it on NPM. I dare him not. Um, and he found it does not exist. So I said, let's go. Let's try and upload it. Cool. On the screen, we can see two packages. One which is really dummy. And from the right, we can see my IP subnet checker. Now, the reason I upload that dummy name is because I wanted to get the real authentic downloads of probably users. When we are uploading a package to a package repository, PyPy, NPM, .NET, we, every time we are uploading this package or just increasing the version, many scanners are just downloading our packages, scan it, and look for something malicious. If they find, so they report it, and it will be removed. So in order to remove all these scanners downloads, I've uploaded a name that nobody will search, and I'm pretty sure and hope that no model will recommend. So if we're decreasing the, the, uh, the IP subnet checker downloads from the dummy one, we can see that there is there are 21 people who downloaded my package across six months. So it works, but it's not a really large number, right? This brings me to my second example. While working on this research, I worked on another one. And in my research, I needed to upload a malicious, uh, a malicious package, no, uh, sorry, a malicious model, but never mind, to Agging Face. So in order to do so, I just asked ChatGPT again for how to upload a model to Hugging Face. And just gave me Hugging Face CLI package. Again, I went and checked, and there were, and there was no such package. Again, I choose to upload it. And look here at the numbers. In six months, almost 377k downloads. Now, if that's not proofs that I can use it, I don't know what will. Now the package doesn't exist, it's removed, and no one can upload it to. But if that's not enough, I've tried to check on GitHub where can I find this pip install. And suddenly I, I seen that in a repository of Alibaba, there is a readme with a recommendation to upload my package in order to integrate with Hugging Face API. So my last slide and the last thing we stayed with is how we stay safe. My first recommendation will be just don't trust these models yet. I mean, use them. They are increasing our productivity in hundreds of percents, and they are great. But still, don't trust them blindly. This leads me to the second reason, to the second recommendation. If you are receiving an answer that you are not 100% sure it's right, just cross-check it with, with an external source that you are trusting. The last but surely not least is use open source securely regardless to LLM, but especially with it. And if you are receiving a recommendation to use a package that you are not familiar with, so go to the package repository and check it. Check its published date. I mean, if you, receiving, if you received it from an LLM and the published date of this package is just la later, a little bit even, from the last training date of the model, it couldn't know about it. So how did it recommend you about the model, about the package that it doesn't know? Check the commits, maintainers. Check how well maintained this package. Maybe it's a legit one, but it's vulnerable, or it's not well maintained and you will not want to use it. Check stars, comments, number of downloads. Look for something suspicious. And look for something that you don't want to use. And if you are seeing something like that, just think twice before you're downloading it. Thank you very much.